Hey, what's up guys? Today I am going to try to teach you how to be a better crewmate and a better imposter in Among Us. So right now I'm playing as a crewmate but uh, I am not going to be exactly aligning the footage here with what I'm actually saying on camera. Um, God damn it. <laughs> um, See, I'm, I'm not really going to pay attention to this game at all. I'm just going to cover uh, the tips and tricks I've figured out myself that I think would make a lot of people better players because I've seen some absolute trash people out there. So starting with the crewmate, I suppose, since I'm playing crewmate, um, there's, there's really three things to, to talk about there between your tasks, your play patterns, and how you choose to vote. So I'm, I'm just going to skip this real quick, excuse me. Um, so just like you saw there, I went reactor immediately. What I like to do first and foremost in a lot of games, not all of them, is get your long tasks out of the way first. So things like the reactor or downloading data, fueling the engines, or that little task where you need to go in and pick out one of the, the medical samples. They're, they're all good things to start on because at the very beginning, the, the imposter has his kill cooldown to worry about. So to avoid a body being found or an emergency meeting being called, it is better to get these long tasks out of the way first. God damn it. Useless. So get your, get your long tasks out of the way first. You don't need to worry about them anymore. This is probably going to be an unnecessarily long video. The next thing I like to do is kind of it's not going to fit into all situations, but plan a bit of a rotation, be it clockwise or counterclockwise. So pick one of your long tasks first, uh, whether that starts down in storage or across in a reactor or whatever. Downloading data up in the, the cockpit, you know, navigation, who cares? But from wherever you choose to start, go clockwise or counterclockwise and hit as many of those quick little tasks you can along the way. This will help stop you running all the way across the ship and then realizing, oh, should I have a task back in the other direction? And you're, you're just running around like a completely headless chicken and it's saving you time. And the more time you save, the more time you can spend watching other people. So that's all good. Um, I would always try verify whether I'm safe or if someone else is safe while I am in a pair. So if one of us happens to die, whether I die or the other guy dies, we can verify that that survivor... I did not pay attention. We can verify that that survivor is safe even if one of us die. That's that's the basic gist of it. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes here, so I'm trying to fucking do this. Typical. Well, that's okay. Um, and anyone who is designated safe, and that doesn't mean, oh, I, I think he's safe, he looked like he was doing a task. If someone has been confirmed uh, to have done a visual task, follow them. Just stay with them, you are safer in a pair than yourself, and try work on doing your tasks together. I know that's a little bit hard, I'm not going to do this task right now, it's too noisy. Um, it's a little bit harder to coordinate, but you can just kind of rotate around a door and hopefully that person will come back and allow you to come in and do whatever task it is you want to get done. In terms of your safe tasks, your, your visual tasks, you have the, the asteroid guns, obviously. 
everybody knows it. Um, we have the shields. The, the lights here will blink and light up when someone has completed a shield task. You have a couple levers to empty the trash and then you come down into storage to launch it out. Um, all, all this very basic stuff, I know I'm not teaching anyone anything new here. And your medbay task. So really, you, you avoid doing these for as long as possible. To me, you want to you wanna save them until someone suspects you before you say, well, no, actually, I have a visual task, I can do this, uh, come with me. Um, just keep the heat off yourself for as long as possible because the sooner you get confirmed to be safe, the sooner you're going to be targeted by a good imposter because you can no longer be suspected and the imposter wants to keep in as many suspects as possible for as long as possible. Um, so I think that's all my tips in terms of actually doing tasks, uh, doing the long ones first. If you can, try plan a rotation clockwise or counterclockwise, stay close to people who have been safe, um, verify those things in pairs, and save your visuals until they're actually needed. Um, the next step in terms of actual gameplay, information gathering is the the biggest thing you have in this game. It is, it is your defense, it's how you win a game nice and early. Uh, so something I will do, let's say it started the game right now, I, will I, I, I won't even acknowledge my task, I won't even read the taskbar, but I'll come right here to the right and I'll watch who's going on the asteroids. If I see someone going to the asteroids, I'll come out here and I'll check that they're actually doing the asteroids. If I see someone come up to the lever for trash, I'll see that too. So immediately I know that someone who goes to one of these two things is likely safe. Uh, I'll try to visually confirm that while they're on the asteroids and I will follow this person around doing their tasks uh, until I visually confirm that they have emptied the trash themselves. And just, just moving right really early in the cafeteria is such a big power move in, in terms of information gathering. You can uh, immediately eliminate up to like three people uh, off your suspicion list if you can confirm he's done trash, he's done guns. That's two people I don't need to fucking worry about. Um, and in terms of doing your safe tasks, try save your asteroids. I wouldn't go across, actually asteroids I would go across and I would do immediately because there's more than likely at least a couple people moving to the right hand side of the ship and at least a few of them are bound to pass and notice the lasers going off or even stop and watch you uh, firing at the asteroids. So that can be multiple people safing you immediately. Um, but never use them all because you might need to reconfirm with uh, survivors if the people who've seen you are now dead. So you're better, oh my god, my dog is howling. Um, <laughs> you're better off saving a couple shots to, to reconfirm with different people that you are indeed safe. Um, you want to avoid committing to hard patterns if you're staying in a lobby for a long time. If you're playing with the same five people, six people repeatedly in a lobby, try avoid setting a hard pattern because it becomes very easy to recognize in later games, oh, Red is always hanging out with Cyan, um, he, why isn't he going with Cyan this time? He must be the imposter, surely, because he's done that in er every other game. If you're just bouncing from one game to another to another, it doesn't really matter. You can, you can keep your patterns as much as you want. Um, but in terms of playing in the same lobby repeatedly, try avoid setting a hard pattern that you might only do the same kind of thing for three games in a row before you switch it up. Um, when you were suspect of someone, and maybe with good reason, it doesn't necessarily mean to vote for them. It just means 
keep an eye on this guy. It, it, it doesn't mean, oh, I'm not sure about his behavior, so I'm going to vote for him, because that can actually draw attention to yourself. And just because they're suspect doesn't necessarily mean that they are guilty. And do you want to avoid throwing an innocent person off the ship? You just want to bring attention in their direction, keep an eye on them. And that is it. Being suspect does not mean vote for them. And in terms of that, you want to be aware of your how you are being perceived by other people because you can become very suspect when all you might be doing is trying to stay close to someone who's been confirmed safe or you might be stalking someone else making sure that they're doing their tasks and uh, to, to be able to confirm that they are safe later on as well. Sabotage drills. So the four sabotages, uh, apart from the locked doors, on this map at least, which I'm specifically covering, is the reactor, the lights, the O2, and the communications. So in terms of communications, I like to get that up and going right away, just so everyone can get back to doing their jobs and you can get back to confirming people who are safe. In terms of the reactor, you need two people in the same room. Um, you know, I, I, I don't really know how much to cover there. You, ju you just want to go to reactor and uh, maybe not even do it yourself, but just watch who is doing it. The, the imposter might be somewhere else. He might be avoiding that room or he might be trying to blend in with the crowd in that room. But it's, 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 it's a little tricky. It's kind of situation dependent. So just be wary with that. And in terms of the O2, um, you do actually have enough time to type in this code, run around to the O2 room from admin or vice versa, and type in the other code. Um, and in terms of lights, you want to get the lights back on as absolutely as soon as possible. You do not want to be going around without vision. Um, you want to minimize the, the time you're... you're your sight is narrowed uh, by as much as possible. If you are hanging out with someone, a lot of people get lost while they're in pairs. It is good to just, uh, as a demonstration, if the lights are off right now, I'm hanging around with uh, pink. I'm just gonna gently tap and make sure step for step we're in with each other, we can still see each other, we're going in the same direction, we're going towards lights. That's no issue whatsoever. Um, so I'm after going the wrong way here, but again, I'm not really focused on the actual gameplay right now. So lights is after going off, I'm running around quick as possible. Let's get these bad boys back on. Um, so yeah, light, lights you want back on as soon as possible. O2. Uh, you can do yourself. Reactor, you do need a buddy to go with you. But uh, just be aware with O2 and with Reactor. If you see a lot of people heading in the direction that that problem is going to be fixed, it doesn't really look like the, the killer is going to have an opportunity to, to kill an individual because there's going to be another witness um, that you... It might be a distraction technique. He might call O2 right now because he's just after killing somewhere down by the engines and he doesn't want us finding the body immediately and gives him a chance to gain some distance. And so just just be aware of that if, if you see a lot of people going towards the things anyway. In terms of the emergency meeting, which has just been activated right now, um, don't, don't be afraid to use it. Uh, something I like to do occasionally without causing grief in the lobby is say in round two or round three, there's been a couple bodies that have dropped. Um, depending on how long the, the kill countdown is, maybe it's 30 seconds, maybe it's 40, maybe it's shorter. But you should, you should know how long that is uh, in the lobby before you actually get in game and let's just say for the sake of argument it is 30 seconds so I know 
from round two or round three onwards that I have 30 seconds before I need to worry about dying. So with that time, I want to run off. I want to get a quick task done uh, do one of your longer tasks if it's still pending um, because you know you're safe. You know you're not going to get killed trying to download some data uh, while that cooldown is active. And it might be smart to run back to the emergency meeting and just hit it again because there's that 20, 30 seconds. Your guys have ran off, got a couple tasks done and the killer hasn't been able to do anything. You're coming back hitting the emergency meeting and now his, uh, his kill countdown has reset. So he has to wait another 30, 40 seconds after that again before he can do anything. And if the crew works together, you can do this a couple times, you know, it might get a little frustrating depending on the uh, discussion time before you can vote to skip. But it is a handy tactic to, to get a couple tasks done without risking anyone's life, particularly the, the fewer people you are, the more prevalent that will become. Um, okay, so in terms of talking here, this is only something I've started doing rather recently myself. I've stopped safing someone immediately. Like, I, let's say I see a guy doing trash or asteroids uh, immediately in the first round, but nobody's suspecting him. N no one tries to suss this person until round three. Well, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna say, well, I saw this fucking person doing this in this round. Uh, obviously, that'll depend if you're still alive. Maybe you wanna get that out of the way nice and early just to make sure everyone everyone knows you safe them nice and early. But you are also kind of painting a target on that person's back by safing them to the imposter. That imposter wants them dead now because uh, it, it's, it's less people who are gonna be suspicious. So if possible, follow that person for as long as you can and then safe them uh, once someone susses them for a reason. Um, be it a good or a bad one. Um, so I think I already mentioned uh, just because someone suspect doesn't mean you should vote for them and just because someone is stalking you doesn't make them a suspect. There, there could be a few reasons. They think you're safe and they want to hang around or they want to make sure you're doing your jobs or something like that. It, it doesn't immediately make them suspicious. So stop saying, oh, this guy followed me here. So I'm voting him. Um, pay attention to the key points in chat. This is really funny. This guy keeps killing the lights and I'm always like right next to it. Pay attention to what people are saying in chat. Um, you want to notice if let's just say green has suspected black in the previous round quite heavily and now he's suspecting blue in the next round quite heavily. Like why the sudden jump? Why are you so certain? And someone who's making heavy accusations without good reason and especially when he doesn't stand by them or he switches to someone so quickly and just as viciously as he was with the first person. Uh, you want to avoid doing this yourself and you want to take what people say who do do this with a heavy pinch of salt because it becomes unreliable information and you will likely end up just voting off someone who had no reason to be, and you're, you're just losing people at that point, and people are gonna leave the lobby. People hate it when it happens to them. It, it pisses them off and kills the quality of the game. So, um, <laughs> yeah, just watch, watch who's voting for who and who's suspecting who, and particularly in the voting part. If everyone is agreeing to skip, and Pink has not said a word about anyone being suspect, but for some reason votes blue in the next round, call pink out on it. Why did you vote black in this case? Um, there was no mention of black being suspect whatsoever. So if that can be suspect in itself, uh, again, it's not necessarily a reason to vote them off immediately, um, but it says, hey, everyone be careful around this guy. He done something uh, without giving fair reason to everyone else. And 
we might want to take what he says with a pinch of salt. And you don't want people to take what you say with a pinch of salt. You want people to take your word for as it is, both because it makes you a better crewmate, and if you're playing repeat lobbies, it will make people believe you sooner as an imposter too. Um, so I think that's pretty much everything from the devoting perspective. Uh, and I think if you do want to hard accuse someone, uh, at least in the case where there's only one imposter, you want to bet your life because you're, you're not going to be willing to, to die for a mistake if you're an imposter because you, you just immediately lose then. Um, so do bet your life. Uh, ideally, you're right. Don't just go betting your life willy-nilly because it will kill trust in... <laughs> good time. We'll kill trust in the entire community of when someone actually does this in the first place as to the validity of it. So I think they're all my basic tips for playing as a crewmate. So I'll move on to the imposter now. I don't want this to be a fucking 20 minute, half hour long video. Uh, imposter in a lot of ways is a much simpler role than playing a crewmate, but simpler doesn't mean easier um, there's much less things many less things you need to be aware of so I'm gonna start with sabotage first and this is something I see people constantly gloss over and there's there have been so many games I've been in personally where had the imposter just abused the sabotage a little bit more a little bit earlier in the game he would have definitely won and people don't really know how or when to use it and I think I've a pretty good idea of this again this is all specific to the scale space ship <laughs> um, so out of the four uh, sabotage techniques again locking doors aside I'm, I'm not gonna bother covering that they're very self-explanatory lock a fucking door vent into the room kill someone vent back out of the room simple as um, or lock a room behind you to prevent a body from being found for a little bit longer but the reactor and O2 I would classify as movement uh, ab abusing people's movement because you were forcing them into a certain direction and the things you need to keep in mind when doing this is reactor will require two people to to switch it off but they will be in the same room you will likely draw more people than just two in that direction but they will need to be two people in the same room to to fix that issue and um, in o2 one person can do it themselves just like i mentioned with the the crewmates um, but it's spread across two rooms and if you want to make a kill uh, this this is particular to O2 you know we have a, a thing here and a pad here so if you're planning on making a kill completely avoid admin there's one way in there's one way out and the vent is far away in the room if someone walks in when you're trying to get over the vent you're you're caught you're done you're, you're game over good job but if you hang it over here, you can make a quick kill in the hallway. You are at risk of the security camera. You do just want to make sure that's not blinking. But you have, you can run over to navigation and uh, plead ignorance. You can escape south. You can escape north. And you have vents in all three directions that you can jump in and uh, maneuver through there without being seen. So. If you're going to make a kill during a crisis um, with with the O2 crisis in particular, target it around the O2 navigation hallway because you have many more uh, routes of escape afterwards. Um, <clears throat> and with reactor and O2, like I said, it's abusing people's movement. You're forcing them into particular areas to actually deal with the problem. Uh, something I like to do is get a kill over by navigation and then cause 
a reactor meltdown. So everyone is running back to, to fix the problem at reactor. It's giving me a chance to distance myself away from the body while everyone is running in the same direction. Um, they're not going to find the body for a little bit longer than they would otherwise. And likewise, if I get a kill near reactor engines or security, I'll cause an O2 malfunction uh, to force everyone to, to the right side of the map. The other two main tasks are comms and lights. In terms of comms, I'm honestly not entirely sure how turning it off works. I will go down, I will twist the knob myself as a crewmate, and uh, it, it will work for me, but I, I don't know if like two or three people need to go turn the dials as well. Um, comms confuses me a little bit in terms of how it works fixing it. But in terms of how to use it, like right now, I'm the killer. Let's say I have five people left I have to kill before I win. And this taskbar is looking pretty good right now. So I'm gonna kill the comms and prevent people from doing their tasks and prevent that taskbar from rising. That, that's, your, that's your hourglass right there. And when, when that's up, you lose, obviously. So when the healthier that green bar is looking, uh, the more you wanna abuse the comms and prevent fe people from doing their jobs. And I would consider lights and comms both ability abusing as opposed to being movement abusing. They, they are kind of as well. People are being forced into a certain area, um, but more, you, you're more so affecting their ability to do their jobs and their ability to, to see and gather information with comms and lights. So avoid attacking comms early game and abuse it more the healthier that green bar starts to look. With lights, uh, lights is completely overpowered. That wants to be your your main point of attack all game, early game, late game, any reason. If people are grouping together like this, kill the fucking comms, run in, kill yellow. These guys are too far away to be able to see yellow at that point. Distance yourself, you were never even there. Uh, if people are standing right near each other, uh, you want to go and grab that kill real quick at literally any point of the game. Lights is what you need to to get rid of people who are, who are grouping together. Um, Jesus, my, my trust getting sore from talking so much, this is going to end up being a fucking 20, 20 minute video or some bullshit. Um, and Something else you can do with sabotage is fake it. Uh, particularly with, say, lights or a reactor, which I think are good ones to fake, is while you're in the area and there's a few people standing around, they, they see you there, um, fake it. Cause an emergency and you be the one to immediately run to it and fix the issue before anyone else can. With with reactor, someone will vouch for you in in a meeting saying that yeah the reactor went off me and this guy were here and he went and done the task instead of killing me it takes heat off your back and that's something good to do early game um, or go fix the lights where there's a couple people standing in electrical or a couple people in the hallway just outside that will see you immediately going to fix it it just takes heat off you very early game and um, with kills um, yeah, it, you, you just need to abuse the sabotage, to, depending on the situation. If you can get the kill right away, then yeah, sure, go for it, if, if you think it's safe. And if, if you're a little bit sketchy about it, kill the fucking lights, or uh, or cause a, cause a meltdown in O2 or reactor and, and force people away. Uh, so you grab the quick kill and get out of there. In terms of faking tasks, which is also something I have tend to catch a lot of imposters out on faking. Fake the long ones and fake the difficult ones. Um, if you can fake something like reactor or downloading data or even the card swipe. Uh, downloading data and reactor obviously take a bit longer. So 
it justifies you standing in a single place for a while. It, it looks like you're busy doing something and it's it's allowing your cooldown timer, uh, your kill cooldown timer to, to train before you can go on the hunt again. You can also try align these to when you see the little green bar jump up a notch and somebody's watching you, that's when you move away. That looks like you've done the task then. Um, hopefully, if they're trying to watch you, they will also be paying attention to the green bar. Um, and something with swiping the card. A lot of people actually have a problem getting that at the correct speed. So that can be something you can waste some time on as well. Uh, but again, try time it so as soon as you see that little green bar go up, you step away. It looks like you've done the task. Voting is probably one of the most important parts of the game for the imposter. Uh, personally, I find myself actually better at earning people's votes than actually being able to kill off the entire crew. So the first thing you wanna do is avoid hard accusations because when hard accusations get made and non-guilty parties are sent away, um, you are immediately next on the chalking block always. Doesn't matter if you're a crewmate or not. If you made a hard accusation, you're just extremely sus when you're wrong. So avoid doing that at all costs, unless you're playing with more than one imposter, uh, you might wanna sell out your, your teammate, uh, again, to take heat off your own back and try to snatch a win. But in that instance, you would definitely want to Give it a little bit of time, make sure he gets a couple kills himself before you uh, end up selling him out for your own benefit. Um, so avoid hard accusations. And you wanna perpetuate people's paranoia. And what I mean by this is when someone is suspect of someone else, feed into it agree with them, like, tell them that you trust them, do, <laughs> uh, sorry, <laughs> I don't know if I'm just really fucking tired or I actually don't know how to explain it, but yeah, you, you want to feed into it, you, you see some guy who's a fucking idiot who thinks, oh, this guy followed me, uh, so I, I think he's the imposter, let him think that, that's great, like, uh, you might be able to get that guy who followed him voted off, and then you can call that guy sus. Don't don't make the hard accusation against him, but bring it back up. And th this is actually leading into my next point: punish mistakes and trolls. So when someone makes a mistake like that, bring it up in the next meeting. Call the emergency meeting yourself. Say, hey, this guy was so certain that this happened, and he convinced me to trust him, so I voted too but he fucked up, so he's probably the guy, and other people tend to jump on board, and it won't really matter that that guy's innocent too, because, uh, you know, he made himself suspicious by making such a hard accusation over something so stupid, and people who are trolling the game just annoy the shit out of everyone, they, they kill the quality of the game. So if, if you see someone trolling, if you see someone hitting the emergency meeting for no good reason at all or super early in the game just say hey guys vote him off i don't want to play with him he's he's whatever so get rid of them as early as you can it's it's a great thing to do um you want to also question people's suspicions and their their reasons <laughs> great <laughs> You want to question people's suspicions and their reason for voting. You, you want to pay attention to who voted last round. Again, if a crewmate didn't really actually make a suspicion against anyone or mention any reasoning uh, or done so for very little, um, call it out in the next meeting. Draw attention towards that person. Again, it doesn't matter if they get ejected and end up being innocent because you had fair reason to be suspicious of them for making such a mistake. And if they're a troll, no one wants to play with them anyway. So that's, that's great. Uh, sorry, that, that was the last point. Um, 
but yeah, question their reason for voting, question their reason for suspicion. Uh, all you need to do is question it. You can feed into it afterwards, but just the fact that you're questioning it makes it feel to the actual crewmates that you are trying to keep the crew alive. You aren't looking to eject anyone innocent. You are looking for justifications for stuff getting done rather than some making a hard accusation. You're just being like, yep, 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 yep. Because then it's like, well, why, why were you so happy to vote him off so early? You didn't even ask what he did to, to be voted for. So just question it, but then feed into it. And you want to, kind of leading on from that point, you want to play along with people in this respect. If everyone is voting for someone, you don't really want to be the guy to, to vote for someone else. You don't really want to be the guy um, who skips the turn or doesn't vote. Just be, you know, blend in with the crowd and uh, abuse their, their mob mentality. You, you hide in it yourself. Uh, by just voting for what everyone else says they're voting for. It doesn't look suspicious at all. But you can also fake concern at the same time and say, okay, guys, uh, I'm not sure that we should vote this person. Uh, if you, you don't want to do this until, like, uh, whoever is being brought into question, let's just say fucking, who's alive? Red. The, everyone wants to vote red and in this game we know red isn't the killer um, for, for argument's sake we're the killer and we're just going to say after people have decided yeah we're voting red or they have voted red that hey I'm not too sure about this and then when he's voted off and it wasn't red you get to come back in the next round and say well I didn't want to vote for him I didn't vote for him that was all you guys you got played by this person he, he convinced you to do this and again uh, divert the blame, divert the attention onto someone else and once again it doesn't look suspicious on you because you're just calling out other people's mistakes um, that, that make them seem suspicious rather than actually calling something out of nowhere and it gives you a justifiable reason to do that too. Um, I would also try avoid skipping. Drag the conversation out. I know some people want to play imposter. They, they just want to fucking murder everyone as soon as possible. They want to speed run the game. That's cool if that's what you want to do. But something I find efficient is try run the time out. Keep people talking. Keep people busy. Keep people distracted. And then let's say three people end up missing the vote entirely um, that's good because now those two people who voted for one guy those two votes are going to get that guy killed rather than um, five people skipping and that guy not getting voted so if you can avoid skipping yourself and if you can distract others to the point that they don't skip the one or two people who do vote will end up voting off the wrong person. Obviously, you don't want to do this if anyone is suspicious of yourself. Um, so, yeah, that's all my basic tips for both being a crewmate and an imposter. Um, this is, once again, pretty specific to Skeld. Am, am I even saying this right? Yeah, the, sk the Skeld. Although, a lot of the the points I've brought up between how you should vote, the reasons why you should vote, uh, playing things softer, playing things safer, and how to follow people and and stuff like that, will completely uh, apply to the other maps as well, just not the sabotage or the, the visual tasks, which uh, I think are slightly different on the, the two other maps, so uh, th this is specific to the Skeld. But I'm just bringing up <clears throat> a lot of points that uh, I've noticed plenty of either newer players or just bad players not considering or not doing or doing wrong. And hopefully if anyone watches this video, it will help you become a better player to some degree. I'm not a master myself. <laughs> Not by any means at all, but there have been plenty of games where I've won vote off killing 
the entire crewmates, uh, or convincing the crewmates to vote for each other, or actually figuring out who the imposter was by myself, or multiple poster, imposters by myself, and of course plenty of other times, including the team. But with these tips, with these tricks, keeping all these things in mind, I know it's a lot. It makes your game so much easier on figuring out who did what and why. So I hope this video helped anyone who's watching and thank you so much for taking the time to listen to some shithead uh, just rabble on the fucking internet because I know this game is completely oversaturated with uh, fucking people making content off it right now and that, that's, that's okay, it's a great game. Just I know I'm probably shouting into a fucking echo chamber here and no one's ever gonna hear it. But that's beside the point. Uh, I just hope one or two people do actually hear this and I hope that it helps your gameplay and that you improve in the future too. It's a great game. I, I want more people playing it and I want better players playing it. It's, it's more enjoyable for everyone. So yeah, um, that's it. Thanks so much guys. Peace out.